welcome back to another video and today we'll be working question 4 from the June 2019 paper. So we'll start, it says the quantity P varies inversely as the square of V. So it says using the letters P, V and K form an equation connecting the quantities P and V. P varies inversely, so we have our varies so inversely, so that would be 1 over the square of v and this is what our first equation or statement will look like where it says the quantity p varies inversely as the square of v so using the letters p v and k form an equation connecting the quantities p and v so what we're now going to do so therefore p is equal to k multiplied by 1 over v square and for those who don't know k is our constant of proportionality so therefore when we work this out what we'll get is p is equal to k divided by v square and therefore this is our answer p is equal to k over v square part two now says given that v is equal to p v is equal to three p is equal to four determine the positive value of v when p is equal to one so first from our formula p is equal to k divided by v square we're first going to substitute for v and p being three and four respectively so therefore what we'll get is p is four is equal to k divided by v square which is three square so therefore what we'll get is four will then be multiplied by 3 squares. So 3 was dividing on the right hand side. So when it comes across, it will now be multiplying. So therefore, what we'll get is 4 multiplied by 3. 3 is 9 is equal to k. So what we're doing first is to find the value that attaches to k, which is our constant. After that, we can then find any value for p or v when given and in this case we're going to find the value for v when p is 1 so therefore 9 multiplied by 4 is 36 which is equal to k so our value or value for our constant k is 36 so now that we know the value for k we can now find the value for v when p is equal to 1 so therefore, what we'll do now is when P is equal to one, K is 36 and that will be divided by or V square. So now what we're going to do is to find the value for V when P is equal to one. So therefore, this will be V square is equal to 36 divided by one so our v was dividing here so when it comes across it will be multiplying and our one was here it have been multiplying so when it comes across it will be dividing so v square is equal to 36 divided by one so therefore v square is equal to 36 now to get rid of the square what we know is that we square root both sides of the equation so what we'll have is v is equal to the square root of 36 so therefore v is equal to plus or minus 6 as when we do 6 6 which is positive numbers we get 36 and if we multiply a negative 6 by a negative 6 we also get 36 however the question says determine the positive value of v when p is equal to 1 so therefore v is equal to 6 when 
P is equal to 1. And that is our answer. Part B now says, given that X is a real number, solve the inequality. So this can be worked two ways. So we can either work this as one entire thing where we're trying to have our X in the middle. So each time that you move a term, you're moving it both to the left and to the right. Or you can break it apart by working minus seven is less than three X plus five as one inequality. And then your second inequality would have been 3x plus 5 is less than or equal to 7. And you solve for x in each case. We're used to doing that way, so I'm going to do it the way where we're just working it as one. So it is minus 7 is less than 3x plus 5, which is less than or equal to 7. So first, we're going to move the 5 because our aim is to have x in the middle. So we're going to move five, so it was adding here in the center. So when you take it across this inequality, it will not be subtracting. And the same thing here, it will not be subtracting. So we're subtracting five from both ends of the inequality. So what we'll have is minus seven minus five is less than three X, which is less than or equal to seven, seven minus five. So what we'll have here is now minus 12 is less than 3x, which is less than or equal to 2. And now our aim is now to move the 3 from beside the x as we want the x alone in the middle. So now what we're going to do is today divide both ends of the inequality by 3. So what we'll have is minus 12 minus 12 is divided by 3 which is less than x which is less than or equal to 2 divided by 3 and when we work that what we'll get is minus 4 is less than x which is less than or equal to when you work this, what you'll get is 0 0.66. So what we'll do is just allow it to remain as a fraction, which is 2 over 3. As we can, the other question that follows asks us to represent it on a number line. But for those who are wondering if we had worked it the other way, for example, I'm just going to do one of it working the other way, where we have minus 7 is less than 3x plus 5. So let me think here, separate it. So this is or. So first we'll need to move the positive 5. So what we do is subtract 5 from both sides of the inequality. So what we have is minus 7 minus 5 is less than 3x. And then what we'll have next is then the minus 12 is less than 3x. So now we'll divide both sides of the inequality by 3. So it is minus 12 divided by 3 is less than x. So therefore, minus 4 is less than x. And as you'll see, this corresponds with the left hand side of the inequality that we got earlier, which is right here. So that connects with this. So that's what I'm saying. So now what you can do is to go ahead and work the other side, which is 3x plus 5 is less than or equal to positive 7. And you'll see that in the end, what you'll get is x is less than or equal to 2 over 3. So now part 2 says, represent your answer in B1 
on the number line shown below. So what we'll have is our x value. So what? Let's say so this is zero. So let's say right here is the two over three, and probably right here is the negative four. So our negative four is here, or two over three is here. So then what this will be is negative four. So X is greater than negative four. So remember, we'll have an unshaded circle here and it would have been going in this direction. And X is less than two over three, less than or equal to. So our circle here would be shaded and it would have been going in this direction where they meet. So therefore, this is what our number line would look like. A shaded circle over two over three and an unshaded circle over negative four. And that is how they are connected. And this is our answer for part two. Part C now says, the equation of a straight line is given as x over three plus y over seven is equal to one. The line crosses the y-axis at Q and they're asking us to determine the coordinate of Q. So what we know is that at the point when a line crosses the y-axis, it would mean that our value for x is zero. So at the point Q, x is equal to zero. So therefore, what we'll have then is zero over three. So we're now replacing X for zero. So it is zero over three plus Y over seven is equal to one. So we're now going to solve for one, solve for Y to get the coordinate. So what we'll have is, we know that zero over three will leave us with a zero. So what we'll have remaining is Y over seven is equal to one. And now solving for y, it would be y is equal to 1 multiplied by 7 as it was dividing on the left hand side. So when it comes across, it will be multiplying. So therefore, y is equal to 7. So therefore, the coordinates, coordinates of q is q is equal to so our x value first would have been zero and our y value is seven. So therefore, q is equal to zero, seven, and that is the coordinates. Part two now says, what is the gradient of this line? So our formula was, x divided by 3 plus y divided by 7 is equal to 1. So we're going to write our formula, writing our formula as y is equal to mx plus so mx plus c, where what we know is that from this formula, which is equation of a straight line, m is our gradient. So therefore, we're writing our formula in that format. So therefore, first, what we're going to do is to move our x over 3 to the right-hand side. So what we'll have is y over 7 is equal to, so x over 3 was adding here. So when it comes across, it will now become a negative x over 3 plus one and now it is time for us to move the seven now it is time for us to move the seven from below the y so it was dividing here so when it comes across it will be multiplying so what we have is the y is equal to seven which is multiplied by the negative x over three plus one. So now expanding this using distributive law, what we have is seven or multiply by seven X over three. What we'll have is minus seven X over three 
plus 7 multiplied by 1 is 7. So therefore, from this and you looking at the formula for a straight line, which is y is equal to mx plus c. So y is y. m now would be minus 7 over 3 or x value lines up and c would have been 7. Remember, c is considered to be our y-intercept. So therefore, for part 1, if you had used the formula to put it in the equation of a straight line, you would have still gotten the value for or the coordinates of Q, because remember C is where the interception, where the interception of the Y axis. So therefore, what we, we still have made the assumption that X is equal to zero and our Y value would have been seven. So we could have found the equation first and then solve for part one and would have already solved part two. So therefore, our gradient M is equal to minus seven over three. And that is our answer. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you for question five.